Hi everyone. Happy Monday night. I'm Angie with a Painted Feather live on the Dixie Bell Paint page this evening. Happy Monday. Um, as you arrive here tonight, please let me know where you are watching from and if you use Dixie Bell Paint Project, our products on your projects and um, let me know if you're freezing where you're at. There's a deep freeze in some states right now. So hopefully you're all staying warm and that you have power. Um, so tonight, the project I have for us is this little storage bench or storage chest. And what we're gonna do on this is we're gonna do a color wash on it and we're gonna add some black wax. Hi Dixie Bell Paint. So let us know where you're watching from. Um, I am a, an elite Dixie Bell retailer in Northern California, about an hour north of the Golden Gate Bridge. And you can find Dixie Bell Paint at Whistle Stop Antiques in Old Railroad Square. They've been there since 1974. So um, they're not going anywhere and we're open seven days a week. So come see us there and also out in Sebastopol. Thank you, Dixie Bell. Happy to be here. Um, so at Sebastopol, in Sebastopol at Ray's Trading Company, come see us out there too. Such a cool place, all kinds of salvage goodies. So hi Kathleen from Louisiana. Hi Joyce from Central Illinois. Hope y'all have your blankets on. Hi Deborah from Long Island. Okay, so let me tell you what I have done on this piece already. Um, this is the color Yankee Blue. And I put actually two coats of this. And hi Deb, how are you? Get, let me see, get all oh, the night ice storm. Hello from New Jersey, hi Susan. So I know it's cold out there, some people. Make sure your paint stays warm. Bring it inside if you have to. Um, so I put two coats of the um, Yankee Blue on this, and we're gonna do a color wash. Hi, Rod from Down Under. And we're gonna do a color wash of, let me show you the color here. Got my little cart. Well, let's see, it's dusty blue. I don't know if you can see it really well here, but I have about 50% water, 50% dusty blue mixed up in this container. Actually, I have it, hold on, let me show you. Here's dusty blue. So we're gonna put a color wash over this, and then we're gonna go in with some black wax to kind of add some dimension. Hi, Tracy from Australia, and grunge it up a bit, okay? You game for that? Um, hi, Anne, snowy Indiana. So what I did to prepare the piece, I cleaned it with white lightning cleaner, and then I sprayed some water on it and got all that white lightning residue off. Hi, Misty, how are you? Misty's a retailer up north in Fortuna, so let us know what your shop name is. I know what it is, but tell everybody where they can find Dixie Bell paint in your neck of the woods, Misty. Um, Misty's really sweet and answers questions for me when, I'm, when I don't see your questions. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking and start working here. Um, I'll keep talking actually, but um, let me show you what I did. So like I said, white lightning cleaner, cleaned up all the residue. And then on the top, I actually had to do some repairs. So I used some Dixie Mud. Isn't this color pretty already? We're gonna make it even prettier, Heather. And I still have a little bit more mud to fix on the top. So um, we are, I'm not gonna worry about the top. I'll do that probably tomorrow on Chalk Paint 101. I am there live tomorrow. So we'll probably continue working on this tomorrow. So um, here is my, these are my options that I kind of was playing around with for this chest and I decided what to do. This was option number one. Oh, I might have to turn on my light. Oh, here we go. Okay, I actually kind of did this on another piece last, a couple weeks ago. So this was option number one. We're not doing this. Um, option number two was kind of this tone, which was Stormy Seas with um, the same color over it, with a dusty blue over it but that wasn't popping enough for me. And then I settled on this look. So, and then I put a little black wax on it to see what it was gonna look like. Temporarily in Orlando, Orlando, 80s in Orlando, that's nice. Um, Dixie Bell wants to know what you're working on and somebody just sent me a mad face. Why did you do that? I'm not doing anything mean. All right, who sent me a mad face? Um, okay, so let's put this, 
over to the side here. And we're gonna get going despite the mad faces out there. All right, so color washing. Here's what you need to know. If you want to color wash, all you have to do is either thin your paint or get your handy dandy little misting spray bottle that you can get from a retailer. Thank you, Misty. And you just um, basically water down the paint and then we're gonna put the paint over this and then we're gonna wipe it back. So hello from New Zealand, hi Janina. Okay, so my paint is super duper thin and I'm not gonna be able to tip it to show you. Well, maybe, can you see that? Really, really thin. I'm gonna move my little cart to the side and I'm gonna pull you guys in here. And we're gonna color wash. I'm gonna work in sections so that we can just, <laughs> we just ignore them. Their issue, not ours. Of course. Thanks, Misty. Um, hello from Palmdale. Anyway, we're gonna work in sections and I'm gonna just use a lint-free cloth to wipe back the paint. So here we go. Hopefully, hello from the Poconos. Hi, Megan. Sounds like somewhere I'd wanna be. Actually, I'm gonna lift this lid up so that I don't have anything in my way. And we're just gonna put this paint on. See how pretty that color is? Before you color wax, did you put on a clear coat on the piece first? Okay, so I don't have any wax on here, but I'm gonna put on easy peasy spray wax. Yes, before we do the black wax, we're gonna do easy peasy spray wax. So, because the paint is super porous, and if I don't, it'll be really hard to get it off and it'll just really grab a lot. So isn't this pretty? Look at this color over. This is dusty blue over the Yankee blue. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on and then we're gonna wipe it back. Get it on the feet here. Kinda looks pretty just like that. And the reason I'm using a color over a color is because when things age, they get different colors about them. They start to look, you know, like they might have had a couple colors or if things age, you might have, may have had a few coats of paint on it. And so I just want that kind of worn look. If you guys have questions as I'm doing this, please ask and if I miss it, I'll come back on later and I will respond. Okay, so look at this. Now we're just wiping it back. I just go in kind of like with your paintbrush, long kind of sweeping strokes to pull it back and pull off more if you want. So go with the grain of the wood. See how nice that's looking though? And then get kind of move your lint-free cloth. This is a t-shirt. Didn't fit my daughter anymore. So instead of throwing it away, we're repurposing. So if you need to add a little water, if the paint's getting too sticky, you can either rub it a little harder or you can get the misting spray bottle and that will help pull it off. So this is, I was thinking about adding a little fluff to this, but I'm actually really liking how it looks just like this. So I may change my game plan and that's okay. So see how that's looking so far? Isn't that pretty? So I wanted a little less streaky, so I'm gonna take my misting spray bottle and I'm gonna pull off some more. But I want it to be kind of uniform looking, so I'm gonna pull it, there we go. Like this and then just keep on working on it till you get it to look how you want. And you know what, in this center, I think I'm gonna keep a little bit heavier with the lighter color. And I want it to have a variance. It's gathering in these edges here. You guys see that? See how it's gathering? Be sure to share for her. Thank you guys. Please share my video. I love when I see you guys share that. Just sprinkle it around out in the universe. And then, goodness out there painting is so good okay so 
Now let's do the wash on the opposite side here. Okay, but see how pretty that's looking? Would it be okay to wet down the second coat more before applying? Absolutely. So I did about a 50-50 mix, but you can add more water. You could do, you know, however you want to do it. This is pretty thin. I don't know if you are going to be able to see this, but this is very liquidy. It's kind of the consistency of water. So, and then when I put my brush in it, I mean, this is how thin it is. It's just dripping off. So, but you can make it more thin than that. So hello from Columbia. Hi, Krista. Okay, so let's do the next coat, but see how pretty that's looking? And I'm glad I just did half of it at once. So now you can see the difference here and see how it's gathering in these little edges on this detail here. So let's get the next layer on because I want to get some wax on this thing for you guys too so you can see how that's going to look. It's going to even add more depth. So and you don't have to do a lot of blending to make things have impact with color. You can do something like this with a color wash and this is more of kind of a, an aging look to something rather than like a refined look. And I want this to look like it's been around the block for a while. So that is my, that's kind of my goal here is to make this thing look like maybe it was, it belonged to my grandmother or something like that. So I'm an antique dealer. This will probably end up for sale at the shop where I'm at. So Thank you, Misty. All right, so I'm actually gonna spray this down this time. Let's see how that goes. Find a clean spot on your towel and see how it is before you wipe it off and after you wipe it off. So, and then we're just gonna wipe it back. And over here, it's pretty much almost dry already. So when you do this process, it's nice because it's pretty quick. So I'll pull this across here. And I'm kind of pulling it all the way across. So I'm probably gonna deposit some paint on what I already did, but that's okay. So I'm pulling this across. If you are watching and you're a retailer out there, um, we can, you know, let them know where they can get Dixie Bell paint. Any other retailers watching, let us know. I'm gonna add a little bit more, so it's drying very fast. But it's not dry yet, so we can still get it off here. Okay. So this is gonna just add so much more character to this. It could have just been that Yankee blue, but this is gonna add a lot of interest to it. And then when we add the black, it's going to even add more. We'll add a little drama with the black. I don't really like a whole lot of drama, but on my painted pieces, it's good. So we're good with that. Did you seal it before you did the color wash? No. So this is going right over two coats of Yankee Blue paint, TJ. So I did not seal it, but before we put the black wax on, I'm going to use easy peasy spray wax to give it a little bit of a barrier between the paint and the wax so that if I don't want it on a certain spot, I can remove it. So we're gonna do that. All right, this is looking so pretty. I actually saw a picture on Pinterest and got this concept and they didn't list the colors, but it's looking in my, my point of view of how it looked on, that, uh, on the picture. So this is good. Okay, so I'm liking this. Oh, you're welcome. So I'm liking how this looks. See how that is there? And this is a little bit drier than that, so the color's looking a little different. Okay, I wanna do one more thing here. How's it going out there, everybody? Um, I wanna do one more thing. I'm gonna add the color wash again around, kind of around these little details here. 
I want to deposit a little bit more of this color. So I'm just going to box in these spots here. Thank you, B. Isn't that nice looking? I saw these on this kind of this concept on kitchen cabinets. I think these would this would look great on kitchen cabinets. Okay, and then I want to go down in this little groove here. All right, so let's do that. Be careful to not knock over that paint. All right, so let's wipe this back a little bit, but I want to keep a little bit more on there. So I'm going to go with a bit of a lighter hand this time, maybe. I need my sprayer. Your misting spray bottle can be used for so many purposes. Anybody working on anything out there? Okay, so, and then we're gonna deposit the black wax kind of in those same spots too. So it'll give some light and dark. And this is not like your real pretty finish. This is gonna be kind of more grungy aged finish. So still pretty. I mean, grungy to me is pretty anyway, but. Okay. So just keep on adding until it gets to where it looks good to you. Okay. All right, isn't that nice? See how pretty that looks? So this is using the Yankee Blue in combination with dusty blue. So look how pretty these colors are together. And then taking most of it off so you still see the depth of the Yankee blue underneath and then you've got this look over the top. So instead of doing like a white wash or you know black wash, I mean you can do a wash with any color. It's really endless. So I just really, really love how that is looking. So I'm going to now, I'm happy with that. We're just gonna work on the front tonight. We don't have to do the whole thing, but I will post pictures. So if you don't follow me at the Painted Feather by Angie, I would love it if you go over and do that. But so we're gonna continue here. Next step is I'm just gonna dry this a little bit. It's almost dry already because when you don't put a whole lot of that chalk paint on, thank you guys for the hearts, then it dries incredibly quick, which is such a bonus with this paint. So let's get a little drying going here. And then we will use our Easy Peasy Spray Wax, and then we will go in with our little tutorial for black wax. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so if you're using, okay, this is just from Harbor Freight, okay, inexpensive inexpensive little heat gun. I had a more expensive one that blew up on me on a live a few weeks ago, so, um, but hey, whatever works. You can use a blow dryer too if you don't have a heat gun. If you're impatient like me, you like to get your projects done. So we're gonna dry this, and then we're gonna put some Easy Peasy Spray Wax on that. You just got a heat gun today, Deborah. awesome. Yeah, they just, all they have to do is put out some heat. So, I actually sometimes have an oscillating heater going to get my pieces dry too, especially when it's cold. But I really love how it deposited these lighter tones here. Oh, somebody just gave me a big surprise face. That's better than the angry face. So. <laughs> Somebody likes it. I'm gonna scoot you back a little so you can see how cool this is looking. Okay. I have to have it nice and dry before I do my wax, so. Bear with me. If you're watching on replay, hashtag replay, and you can fast forward through this part if you're watching on replay, so. If you're not, just hang in with me and for a couple minutes. Thank you, Misty, for sharing my page. Thank you, Deb. She likes my decor. I change it up quite a bit. 
Okay, we're almost dry. It's in the creases that it's not quite dry yet, so we'll get it dried. Yeah, I'm really loving this color combination. I actually haven't used this color combination before, but I like it. It's kind of a different, um, different play on like a country blue. So my store, Nona, is at um, Whistle Stop Antiques in Santa Rosa, California, and also at Ray's Trading Company in Sebastopol, California. So about an hour north of San Francisco. So if you're ever in NorCal, come see us. All right, almost done. If you hold your heat gun too close, your paint will bubble, so don't do that. Just keep on moving it. All right, we're pretty good. Just a couple little spots, and then we're gonna get on to putting some really pretty black wax on here. Now you can wait 24 hours and put the black wax on the next day, but I really want to show you how pretty this is going to look. Okay. One spot left. Okay, I think we are good to go. All right, I think I lost some people there, but that's all right. Got a few people, well, actually quite a few hanging in still. All right, so black wax. Before you put on wax on a surface, if actually if you're using silk paint, you do not need to seal your piece before you use the black wax, or if you want it to be really dark and you want the color to grab, you don't have to use anything to seal it. But if you wanna be able to manipulate the wax and move it around a bit and remove it from the surface if you get too much on, then you need to put something in between the surface of your paint and the black wax. So here's what we're gonna do. We are going to use the Easy Peasy Spray Wax and we're gonna put this on and um, you normally wanna wait a little longer than I'm gonna wait, but I'm just gonna go straight away and, and put this on. So we're gonna put this on and this will create a buffer between the very porous paint and the black wax. So thank you, Dixie Bell. And so let's do that. So you can put this on with an applicator pad or you can use a lint-free cloth. So the t-shirt, different t-shirt than I'm going, than I was using before. And I can use this one for my black wax too. So I will do that. So here we go. I'm gonna pull you in so you can see this. We'll adjust you a little bit. But look how cool this is looking. Okay, and this will, this will create a seal. The um, spray wax dries matte. Really great for fabric. Lots of project, projects that you can do with this. Or if you want something just super easy peasy, use the spray wax. Um, repels dust and grime, contains carnauba wax, odor-free, low VOCs, I think it's no VOCs, water-based and eco-friendly. So I just sprayed it on and then I'm just gonna wipe it. Just gonna kind of rub it across the surface here, make sure I get everything waxed. And this is going to, like I said, create a seal, a buffer between the paint and we're gonna do the black wax. So I just love chalk paint because it's so easy. I don't think I got the feet. So easy to use and it's incredibly quick to work with because it dries so fast. I mean, I did use a heat gun, but even if I didn't, it dries incredibly fast. Okay, I'm adding a little bit more there. 
So the waxes will enhance the color a little bit. I don't know if you can see the color change happening there, but the wax does enhance the color a little bit and it's sealing the paint. So how easy is that? If you haven't used the spray wax before, you need to get some. It's great to put over patina paints too before you seal. So, here's a good tip for you. I like to put it over the patina paint before I put my sealer on. It seems to kind of keep the color consistent. All right, I'm gonna feel it. So it feels a lot smoother than the chalk paint does. Yeah, Misty, the spray wax is so good. All right, hi Barb. All right, how are we doing out there tonight? So I'm just gonna go over this one more time here. Make sure I got all that extra wax off. On this little key detail, keyhole detail, I'll be putting um, gilding wax on too. So if we have time, that'll be my finishing touch. Okay, so I'm just buffing this a little bit. And then we're gonna get going with our our black wax. All right, we're ready to roll here. All right, before I do that, I'm gonna go throw my brush in a baggie. So hold on, hang in with me for a second. Okay, this is my mini angle brush and I love it so much and I don't want it to dry out on me. So I'm gonna throw it in a plastic bag here. Okay, now we're good to go. We're right by my kitchen, so. All right, let's get some black wax here. So I have, I have a few different things that I'm gonna use with my black wax. And I have all sorts, I like to use the black wax with different brushes. So I have my bell brush and I just, I use this brush for black wax only. Margaret and Corbin. Um, okay, so I see Misty's answering questions. Thank you, Misty. So. When these get really crunchy, then I'll clean it, but it's pretty soft still, so that's okay. I'm gonna use this probably on the feet. And then I have an assortment of brushes that I'm going to use here. So I have an eyeliner brush that I'm gonna use right in the little trim details. And I have a little tiny art brush if I just wanna add little dots of the black wax or if I want to go around this little keyhole. I have another art brush and then I have like this little wax brush. So I'm using different, all our different brushes, different tools for different pieces, okay? So right now I think I'll start, I want to go down on the feet here and I kind of want it heavy on the feet, kind of like if you're using caviar or a dark color to add you know, some depth. So the wax is really nice. You don't need a whole lot of it. And I'm gonna get my, the same lint-free cloth that I had for the Easy Peasy Wax. And I'm just gonna go here. I want a lot of wax on the feet. So I'm using my big brush. I'm just gonna brush it all the way around. And then I'm gonna wipe it. might use the brush to kind of actually blend it in quite a bit here. Actually, I'm kind of liking that. So you can really change the color of the paint with a black wax, and I want to do that on the feet. Now the rest of it, I don't want as much wax on, but for the feet, I like the feet and the top to kind of be grounded and have a little bit darker color, so a little grungier. I'm putting quite a bit on here. See how dark that is? Look at that. So, and now I'm gonna take my lint-free cloth. Let's bring it in. And I'm gonna wipe it back. Oh, that is so pretty. I'll bring you, when I have it a little higher here, you'll be able to see it better, but it's looking amazing and it's putting just this really beautiful sheen from the wax on the foot. Um, so it looks 
so good. And that's all there is to it. So look how pretty that looks already. Okay, now let's go up. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. So I want, I'm gonna go in this trim. I'm gonna do that with my little eyeliner brush. So let's do that. Let's see if you can see here this whole thing. Isn't that pretty? Look at the difference from this color to that and just adds a little drama. Okay, so I have my little tiny, this is an angled eyeliner brush. Thank you guys for the hearts. Please share my video, I appreciate it. So eyeliner brush and I'm going to, you can either get the lid and tap off your excess, which I'm gonna do and then, okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna go in this little line right here and it doesn't look like it's gonna do much, but I tell you what, you put this black wax in these little grooves and you're not even gonna, like people won't even know what you did to add the dimension and the detail, but you're gonna know, and you're gonna know how to do it. So, okay, we're just going in this little trim and I love this little brush because it gives me the control to do it and I don't panic that I'm gonna get too much wax everywhere. So we're just putting it right in this trim. I don't know if you can see that, but when we get up a little higher, you'll be able to see. Bring in a tiny bit. Okay. So just a little bit goes a long way. And then we're gonna we'll buff it in just a second here. So all the way across. And if you notice that it's not getting in a spot, just go back and forth. And I can just fit it right in this little groove and just go right across here. See how that's looking? I think you guys can see that. Best dang wax is dang good. Okay, so I'm gonna bring it across here. And I'm just gonna Fit my little brush down in that groove, and then we're gonna wipe it back. So, this takes a little patience, but you know, you just get into a groove with it, and it's very kind of meditative, and you're not thinking about all that other stuff that you don't wanna think about. really good little escape so okay see how that wax is looking there all right so now I'm gonna take my lint free cloth and I'm just gonna take my finger and I'm just gonna wipe it across here all right now we've got that nice dramatic little line I'm gonna buff it back All right, can you guys see that? See that dramatic line now? Okay. All right, so yeah, it's looking good. I hope you guys can see this okay. I'm gonna bring you back in here. Let's go up. So I will be going in there, but I wanna have enough time. So I wanna do all around here and I want you guys to see this. So for this part, I think I'm gonna use a little bit larger art brush. So I'm gonna use this brush now. Can you use silk over, or can you put silk over gator hide? Uh, maybe Dixie Bell can answer that. Um, I haven't tried it yet. Silk is a pretty new product for me. Why would you wanna put it over the gator hide is just a question. I think if you, if you scuff sand, you possibly could, but... Um, just curious why you would want to do that. Okay, so I've got my art brush here and I'm just going in along this line. This is gonna create this shadow. 
and really pop out this detail here. Okay, see that? Now let's go up, and I'm gonna do it on the outer part of that little box too. This is pretty quick. Okay, and this is a pretty stiff brush um, to color wash a finished product. You know, if you're gonna color wash, so silk doesn't really like water. So if you're gonna color wash with a paint, I would use the chalk mineral paint would be my um, answer for that one. You, you don't really add water to the silk. So if you wanna color wash, I would do it. I would probably give the gator hide a really good scuff sand and then do it. And then you might wanna add a little more clear over that. So um, you could color wash right over silk with a different chalk mineral paint. You can layer the chalk mineral paint with the silk, but you kind of want something a bit porous to put the silk on. So, okay, so see how that's looking already? Um, clean with white lightning and scuff sand and clean. Yeah, but if you wanna add water to the silk, Silk doesn't really like water, so I don't know about color washing, but if you, eh. yeah, that's an interesting question. So maybe Dixie Bell will answer that, or I'll think about it and get back to you. Okay, so now I'm just taking my lint-free cloth, and I'm just rubbing, and I'm gonna bring this out a little bit, because I want it to be, I want this piece to be a bit grungy, okay? So, okay, so now I've done this box. Now I want to do this whole detail here. See how that's popping out that though already compared to the other side? See how nice that looks? Like this, it's not really popping out. This one is. So I'm gonna bring you back in a little bit and then we're gonna continue here. And actually this will be a good side by side, I think as we go along. I'm gonna switch back to my little bitty brush here so I have good control to get it right down in this groove here. And this, on this coat here, because I wanna show a little bit of that light color, I'm not being perfect about getting it everywhere. I'm just getting it where it, where it gets. I'm just kind of depositing it somewhat around this trim here. But I'm gonna leave a little bit not on there so that some of that lighter color still shows. Okay. All right, see how that is just adding so much drama and dimension there? Okay, so we've got that going. And now on this outer edge, I want it to be heavier. So I'm gonna deposit more on this little outer edge. So I'm gonna just get in this groove here. And all along this whole trim piece here. And we're really gonna add some drama and I'm gonna get a little bit up around the edges just cause I feel like it, why not? and grunge it up a little bit more here. Okay, I'm gonna bring it up on a little bit on the edge here. Maybe down in here. Okay, you can kind of do a crescent with it, but I just, this is kind of a little bit more free form. This is not like beautiful, pretty wax. This is grungy. This thing's been sitting around at grandma's house for a long time and looks cool now. Okay, see how pretty that looks. Okay, now I'm gonna add some up along the edge. Actually, I'm gonna go in this edge here, this trim. 
and all along this edge here. Okay, and then get our lint-free cloth and just rub it in. And I'm going light here because I want to keep it deposited a bit more. Okay, I'm really liking how that's looking. Okay, I'm gonna move you guys back so you can see how this is looking here. Okay, so see this foot compared to that one, just how much cooler that looks. And then I may buff this out a little bit more. Now, um, a tip for you, if you get wax where you don't want it, isn't that pretty with the wax? If you get wax where you don't want it, you can get a baby wipe and wipe it back, or you can get your easy peasy spray wax and you just spray it on your lint-free cloth and then you can wipe it back. Let's see if I can show you. You can kind of erase it. So let me see if I can bring you up here so you can see. Okay, so let's just say if I don't want it, right here you can just get it and we can erase it so that's another great thing see that it just goes away so if I say oh shoot I got too much on there we already put the easy peasy spray wax on we created a barrier between the paint and the um, wax for the black wax and now it enables me to have the control to take it away so i'm always very shiny when i'm doing these <laughs> anyway all right so all right that is our kind of before and after it'll look even prettier when it's all done i said if i had time i was going to show you the gilding wax so one more little thing here gilding wax comes in a bunch of metallics as well as a black. Let me see if I can find my silver because I really want to do this in a silver. And I find it, or I could use the zinc. Let me do one of those. Okay, hold on. Let's see if I can find my silver. Oh, apricot. I have every other color here. There it is. Okay, have my silver. I want to pop out this little keyhole. Thank you, beautiful glow. I'm shiny. Oh well. Okay, let's pop open this wax here. I want to show you this. Wish I looked like that while I paint. Thank you. What will you put over this project? I will put um, gator hide over this project, like a nice satin finish that will protect it. I love gator hide. And I spray my top coats actually. Um, thank you. Thanks, Deb. Okay, last thing. Let's see how pretty this is gonna look. The silver is gonna look popping with this blue. Here we go. Look at this. I'm gonna just pop out that little keyhole detail. Right with our finger. So if you don't follow Angie at the Painted Feather, I would love it if you go over and follow my page. And if you need some Dixie Belle paint, you can click on that little link that says buy Dixie Belle paint here, or you can search for a local retailer. Look how pretty that is. You can search for a local retailer in your area by going to DixieBellePaint.com and clicking on find a retailer in my area, put in your zip code and you'll find a bunch of people. If you want silk paint, find an elite retailer like me and um, feel free to send me questions. And if I didn't answer your question while I was live on here, I will circle back and do that um, a little bit later. So. Thank you, Dixie Bell Paint. I love being here. I'm here every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time or 9 p.m. on the East Coast. I follow Pam. She did some color washing tonight too. And um, hope you all have a great night. Go paint some things and um, I will see you next week. I'm on Chalk Paint 101 next or tomorrow. Can you put the lid down? Oh yeah, let's do that. Okay, so my lid's not done yet, but Look how cute that is. So it's gonna look even more amazing. Do they sell Dixie Belle in Australia? 
I believe so. Yeah, we have Mon. Mon's a retailer. Wonderful. I love this piece. Thank you. It's going to look so much better when it's all done. I'm going to add more black wax and um, I'll post pictures when I'm done. So go follow my page and have a wonderful night. I will see you all next week and um, come over to Chalk Paint 101 tomorrow at one o'clock on the West Coast or four on the East Coast if you want to see me continue working on this. All right, everyone. Thanks. Have a great night.